So we'll do internal forces. So again, all of this is from uh, practice and as it were. And um, so I was gonna start with one. Um, I assigned one of these two to you. I can't remember if I signed. Um, so in the practice, they have they have two um, they have two of these. Um, but in in your homework assignment, I just assigned one of them. And uh, so this will be question three or four. I don't know if this is the one from the homework assignment. Oh, do you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about before I uh, start doing work? Um. So you're doing internal courses only today? Yeah. Okay. okay, so I was going to start with this one because just gets at internal forces. So this is going to be number three from practice 10. Okay, so practice 10. Oh, come on, give me a. This will be practice 10. Okay, number three. Okay, and so here's the givens. And it's the same thing as it is for number one, um, but they just kind of change an angle on you. Um, but basically, it looks like, you know, there's a so, you know, hinge here. And of course, you know, I'm doing a, a very sloppy job with the drawing, but I'll do the best I can. Get something out here. I'm going to go ahead and say this is not the best I can, that I can actually do better than this, but. Okay, so this thing. And there's a force out here and it's acting as it's acting like this. And it's got a force of P, which they don't tell us what P is. Do they tell us what P is? I want I need to know what P is. Can't solve without P. Um, okay, I don't see where they tell us what P is. Oh, here we go. P is 515 newtons. Okay, and then um, we've got some, um, oh yeah, this is a roller over here. It's a wheel, this. And so this is 200 millimeters. Okay, this is 200 millimeters down to here. Okay, from here over to here is, um, let's see, this is 150, this is 200 millimeters, millimeters. This right here is 30 degrees. I wonder if that's going to come into play. There's a point somewhere in here called J, which is 100 millimeters. I don't know why J exists. It probably has to do with what they ask you to do. Um, this is A, B, C. I guess D is in this bend. E is over here. I don't know why they went to J and they skipped F and all these others. Um, okay, so this is uh, this is the drawing for this weird thing, all right? And so it's got a wall over here. So that's a roller. And it's got a wall up here. Okay, and so the first thing I say is says, draw the free body diagram of the entire body and member AJ. Okay, so of the entire body, I'm gonna do this very quickly um, because I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this. So here's the entire body. Okay. And now we just have to think about the forces. So um, when thinking about the forces, we note that here, this is a pin, okay? So that means it can rotate, but it cannot go to the left or right, and it cannot go up or down. Okay, so that's gonna be AY, AX. Okay, we've got a 550 Newton uh, force here, a 515 Newton force downwards here. And then this right here is a roller. So it will not be able to go to the left or the right, but it can go up and down and it can twist. So it can't go to the left or the right. So we'll just call that, you call that E to the X or you could just call it E because it's the only possibility there. Okay. So that's for the entire member. 
And then it wants uh, the member AJ. Okay, so it only wants, so basically what it wants you to do is it wants you to um, kind of cut it right. Oh, come on, is there a reason you don't want to draw for me? Okay, it just wants you to basically cut it right there. Okay, so this is, um, so we'll draw just that portion of it. Okay, and so it looks like this. Okay, now I usually like to kind of draw it like, whoop, you know, so that's where it got cut off. Okay, now the nice thing about it is if you've already done the rest of the, of the free body diagram, you know, we know that this top bit is gonna be exactly the same. So here's AX, here's AY, AY, okay. And then to get the, um, so then we have to think about the effect of the bottom half of this, of this, you know, what we cut away on what remains. And so the question becomes, can the bottom half, you know, push to push left or right on, on the rest of it? And the answer of course is yes, it can. Um, now there's different sign conventions for these things. Um, if AX and AY are written in the way they are, it seems likely that, um, you know, anyway, I, I'm just gonna write them as forces here. So this is gonna be, uh, this is the shear within the, what do they want to call this? Um, they want to, they're going to want to call this the shear at point J. Okay, and this, this force, right? I just like to draw them positive, even though it's not necessarily that's a positive shear. Um, this of course would be the, uh, would be the, uh, the compressive, the axial force. So I'm just going to call it force, the force of J. And then we're going to put a moment at J. Okay, now why do we put a moment here? Well, the reason we put a moment here is because this is not a joint, like it's not a, a pin. So basically, if I were to twist on this end over here, it would affect everything above, above it, right? So that means that there, this thing is supporting a moment here. So I'm going to call that moment at J. Okay, so I mean, it's not a very well drawn moment. Let's go ahead and erase that moment and redo it. Let's just make it a whole different color like this. Oh, come on. F of J is like this. And the moment of J looks like that. Okay. And so that's how we do these. Um, moments, these uh, internal diagrams. Okay. So then uh, any questions about that? So you said V is the shear stress? No, oh, sorry, it's the shear force. Okay, and then what is the F again? That's the axial force. Okay. So basically the, the way we think about it is like, um, is like, okay, so we've got this portion of, you know, we've got this portion of the, I draw, you're gonna let me draw. Yeah, okay, so we've got this portion of the, of the frame. And what I wanna imagine is, if I took the rest of this portion, this portion of the frame down here, this portion that's down here, and if I moved it up or down, would that, would that, would that create a force on this one? And the answer is yes, right? Like, so that, that would certainly affect what's going on up in here. So that means there needs to be a force right there. So we draw that force. If I were to move this top bit left or right, would that cause, you know, would that, you know, affect what's going on up here? And of course it would. So that means that's why we have a force here. Okay, now what if I just twisted it? If I just like put a pin right here and I just, you know, right at J and I just kind of twisted it, you know, or right just, just below J, right? Would that have an effect on what's going on up here? And it would. So therefore, you know, we've got this, we've got this moment as well. Okay, and that's really how, how I like to solve it. Okay. Okay, so, um, erase these. all right, so then what it wants us to do is it wants to solve for FJ, BJ, and MJ. Okay, so we, so these are all internal to the, um, the, the, you know, the structure. So any ideas how we do that? 
You have to write forces in the X and in the Y. Mm -hmm. On which diagram? The, the one, the last one you put. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do, let's see here, we'll go some of the forces. I mean, and the order is not terribly important here. I mean, it probably matters, but let's just, let's just do it in a way that makes sense for us, right? So in the X direction, we'll go AX plus VJ equals zero. Okay, we can't solve that one, right? It's got two unknowns, it's one equation, so there's not really a whole heck of a lot we can do with it. So then we'll go in the y direction. The y direction is going to treat us the same way. So we've got um, ay plus fj equals zero. Okay, same problem. Two forces, two unknown. Some of the moments in the z direction. Where do you think we want some moments? Um, J. J. Yes. If we do it at J, then we will only have one force, which will be a, a, no, well, we will have, yeah. So if we do it here, okay, FJ will go away and VJ will go away, but those are the things we're solving for. Like that's what we're looking for. Can you see the, can you see how that's going to be unhelpful? Yeah. But if we do it at A, then, so if I go up here and do it at A, then AX and AY are going to go away. And so is FJ, because FJ passes right through the center of that point. So we're going to do this at A. And so the only things we'll have there is we'll have VJ times its moment arm. So I have to go back and look at this original drawing over here. And its moment arm is 0 0.1 meters. And as drawn, it's gonna go this way around A. So that's gonna be, uh, what is that? That's uh, counterclockwise. So we'll put it a positive sign there. And then I've got, and then the only other moment that we've got is MJ. So, which is, which I drew as positive. So plus MJ equals zero. So that's nice, except again, two, un two forces, two unknowns. Um, any idea how to, how to get past this? Mm, I don't know. Okay. Um, well, um, I will give you um, a hint. Look at this direct diagram over here. How many unknowns does that diagram have? Three. Right. So how many can we solve for in a 2D statics situation? How many equations do we have in 2D statics? Two. What? Two? You just told me about three. We just did three right here. Oh, oh, well, yeah, including the moment. Yeah, well, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know it's a lesser, well, I know it's a lesser equation to you, but we can still use it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's, um, let's do it. How do you think? Okay, so all we really care about here, because what we need here, if we look over at our equations over here, what are we looking for? Oh, come on. What are we looking for if I want to solve, if I want to solve this one, what do I, what do I need out of this? Out of this big thing that's going to help me solve what's on the right. A Y. A Y would be helpful. What else? A X. A X. Right. We don't care about E X. Okay. I mean, it doesn't hurt to get it, but we don't care about it. So, um, can you look at this and tell me what one of them is? One of them is really easy. Um. A-Y is 515. Yep, so let's go ahead and, you know, we could, let's, we'll formalize it by saying some of the forces in the Y equals zero and A-Y minus 515 Newtons equals zero. So A-Y equals 515. 
you know, the quicker you can see these things, the, you know, the better, because it saves you time, obviously. Uh, okay, so that's good. Now, what about 8x? Uh, it's not so obvious, right? Because we sum forces in the x, right? We get two unknowns. We get ax plus ex equals zero. So not so good, right? So what do you think we're going to want to do? Take a moment. Where do you think we want to do it? EX. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the moments at E in the Z direction at E. Right. And that kind of stinks. We, like our instinct is we want to do it at A, but you know, A is not really going to be, you know, that helpful for us. So um, unfortunately, uh, so let's do it. Here. Okay. And so here's, you know, a lot of people like to draw this to show positive. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So what am I writing down? Um, negative AX. Negative AX. Oh, okay. I see. Cause you're saying that it's causing things to spin this way. Okay. So negative AX. Okay. So oh. negative AY. Oh, we're doing moments here. We need moment arm. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. um, it's the 200 plus the 200, right? Right. So what's 200 plus 200? 400. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to write that as 0 0.4 meters, if that's okay. Okay. Um, I just like to work in meters if I can. Okay. What else? Minus AY. Let's see, AY, yes, minus. Okay. We actually just solved for AY. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 515 in there. If that's reasonable, I think it's 515 newtons. Okay. What's its moment arm? 400 or 0.4. Nope. Remember, it's a perpendicular distance. Oh, oh um, 350. No, because 350 goes all the way to here. 200. Right, good. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done this, right? We've kind of, we've kind of gone another direction. Okay, what else? Any other forces? Uh, 515. Right. Positive or negative? Positive. Right. Um, that would be 350. Right, 0 0.350. Okay, now what am I writing? Equals zero. Equals zero, good. Okay, so then we just solve this for AX, All right? So we'll get AX, whatever that AX is. Give me a second and let's see if I can't um, do this, must do this. Okay, um, let's make note, anybody who's paying attention because we've got these two 515s here. This one is, uh, what was that? That was AY, right? And this one was the applied force. The other one was the, the applied force. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we'll go 515 times 0.2, uh, that is a negative number. You know, this is the problem with calculators. You start doing it and, um, you know, some a lot of the stuff you could do in your head would be a lot quicker. Um, so AX is going to be 193.123.125 Newtons. Okay, let me make sure I got the sign right there. It appears that I did. Okay, oh wait, did I divide by 0. 0.4, I did, okay. Okay, so there you go. Cool, right? Okay, what do we do? Um, we can put it in the other one, other equations. Yeah. Let's put it in the other ones. Okay, so I'm gonna go right here. Here's where AX goes. I'm going to plug in uh, one, come on, you can do it, 193.125 Newtons. And then for AY, I'll plug in uh, 515, come on. It's like they just decided to change the controls here on, like the semester is almost over and they changed the controls on Zoom. Okay, so uh, anyway, so those equations are really easy to solve now, right? So like, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to squeeze this in there. Bj equals negative 
one, two, five newtons. Fj equals negative 515 newtons, right? If I solve those, okay, those were two of my questions. And then the last thing that I wanted was I wanted to know what Mj is. And so Vj, we're gonna, come on, we can do it. Okay, we get the negative 193.125 newtons and 0 0.1 meters plus Mj equals zero, so mj equals, looks like mj is going to be a positive number, that's nice. Uh, looks like it's going to be 19.3125 newtons times meters. Okay. And then if we wanted an answer, right, because that's, that was a, that's a, those are horrible answers. Um, erase all this junk. Uh, Oh, thank you for showing up, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to be sitting here wondering if I should bother teaching to myself. I probably, I probably would have chosen not to. Um, you know, since this is supposed to be a, a you know interactive thing, so then we would say, well, VJ equals um, negative one ninety three point. It's one ninety three newtons. FJ equals negative 515 newtons and MJ, you know, his airness himself, 19.3 newtons times meters, okay? And that's how we would do it. And this would be our final answer, okay? And to me, I always find it really interesting that this is kind of what's going on. So basically this is what's going on right here in the middle of that, of that frame. So if the frame can't handle that, you know, and, and in this particular problem, um, no, I mean, there's probably, there is some variation, but um, basically what it says is like, let's imagine that this thing were made of, that this frame were made of like toothpicks. Well, if the toothpick can't handle this kind of uh, shear, I mean, excuse me, this kind, yeah, this kind of shear, then it's just gonna snap, right? So that means like if, let's suppose we have a toothpick and we try to shear it, shear force like that, okay? And it can't handle 193 Newtons of shear, then it's just going to break, okay? If it cannot handle 515 Newtons of force going this way, okay? Well, in this case, I guess it's going the other way. So it, it's being pulled on, it's, been, it's being tensed, um, then it's going to uh, snap, okay? And if it can't handle being being bent with 119.3 newtons times meter, meaning being bent this way, uh, oh, sorry, well, whatever, um, then it will snap. And so this is where engineering comes in. And this is what we're doing when we engineer things is we're trying to make sure that what we design, we really care about these internal forces because it tells us, like, obviously we could always over-engineer it, right? We could always just say like, I'm just gonna get the hugest thing ever and it's gonna be able to, you know, it's gonna be able to withstand a thousand times as much force as it needs to, but then no one hires us to do the job because it's too expensive. Instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, let's make sure we have enough material to do the job and no more, you know? Um, and when I say no more, we build in a factor of safety, you know, not exactly the amount we need, but, um, you know, more, right? And so if there's a, if there's a location in this frame like if right here, for example, I'm just picking a random spot. I'm not doing any math on this, but let's just suppose that the forces, if the forces were small, forces and moments, if the internal forces and moments were small, then we'd want to use less material right here. We'd want to redesign this so that we could go, oh, well, well, we don't really need a lot of material there. So we're just gonna like kind of make this thing narrow right there because we don't need it. I mean, that looks a little scary the way, you know, in this particular thing, but there are times when you might do that, you know? So like a lot of times people will do a concrete canoe or something, you know, let's suppose you got a concrete canoe. You know, concrete canoe, or there's a canoe. Like, I don't know, are you familiar with the concrete canoe competition? Oh, you're frozen. All right. Well, <laughs> anyway, you have a concrete canoe competition. And if you do the forces here, well, really what's happening is you've got two people sit in this thing. OK, 
Okay, and then you've got um, and you've got the buoyant force all along the bottom. Oh, she's gone. Okay, and then you've got these two weights right here and one right here. Okay, and if the weight of the canoe matters to you, which it does, because you're having to move it through the water, then what's going to happen if you if you do the internal forces on this thing is right up here. There's almost no forces on the canoe. So you don't need a lot of material. Okay, I mean, probably, well, there's probably not a lot of moments right here in the middle either, but um, anyway, uh, just something to think about. Okay, well, um, I'm all alone now. Um, so I'm talking to myself. Let's see, um, trying to think of a good joke that I could tell while I wait for people to kind of show back up. I don't have any really good jokes, not at the moment. Um, I've read some on, on uh, Reddit that I've enjoyed, but they're um, they're not really that racy, but they're a little, uh, <laughs> uh, you had a job as a masseuse once, I got fired. Guess I rubbed people the wrong way. Eh? Eh? <laughs> okay, let's just work another problem. <laughs> no one's here, but we'll work another problem. And if someone shows up, I'll have to start over. So uh, <laughs> um, I know I cracked myself up. All right, so uh, let's let's. Um, nobody's even nobody's even listening. So uh, you probably just zoom through all of this. I'm gonna find another um, another problem. Oh, one of my absolute favorite types of problems. I love these. All right, so let's uh, let's let's clear all drawings. At the very least, I can set this one up while I wait for somebody. So this will be number eight or eight through 10 in that practice set. Okay. And what they want is they want to consider the given beam and loading. That's what they say. I think I stole this one and put it on an exam, actually. Um, and it looks like this. Okay. I'm actually going to get out of, especially because no one's even here. I'm going to get out this, uh, this here, yonder mountain. Um, yeah, that'll be perfect, right? And so we need twos and ones. So the two will be uh, four centimeters. One, two, three, four, be right there. And then we need ones, it's gonna be two centimeters, it'll be right there. And we need another two, and right here we've got a roller. Rolling. All right, so we've got this is point A, this is point B. This is uh, 600 kilo, 60 kilonewtons, excuse me. And this is 25 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, 25 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, and then this looks like this is one meter. Two meters. This is two meters. Sweet. All right. <laughs> All right. So the first thing they want you to do is draw the free body diamond creep beam required to determine the external support reactions. Blah blah blah. And then they want a free body diagram for for from zero to two. Okay. Uh, oh, they want free body diagram for all the sections. Ooh. And then they want the shear and the bending moment diagram. All right, so first, um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm not really gonna do everything they want. I'm gonna solve for the, our reactions. Let's get our reactions, reactions. Okay, because I wanna know what's going on at A and what's going on at B. Okay, so here's a free body diagram. And it looks something like this. Okay, so I've got AX. I've got a Y, oh, you know what? Let's draw the beam first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, I like getting ahead of myself, but okay. So I also don't like taking too much energy on easy free body diagrams. Here's AX, here's AY. Well, that's wrong anyway, AY and AX. Here's BY. Okay, here's my 60 kilonewtons coming down. Okay, and I've got 20 kilonewtons per meter for two meters, 25, excuse me. So that's a total of 50 kilonewtons and it's happening one meter from the edge here. So this is gonna be 50 kilonewtons 
It's happening one meter from this edge. This 60 is happening two meters from this edge. And then in between them, it looks like we've got two meters total. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and solve for the, solve for the reactions. So let's see here, sum of forces in the X will tell us AX equals zero. Sum of forces in the Y will tell us AY plus BY minus 60 minus 50 equals zero. Okay, so AY plus BY equals 110, which makes sense. We've got 110 going down, we need 110 coming up. Okay, we can't solve that yet though. So we'll do the sum of the moments in the Z direction. Easiest spot to do this is at A equals zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, well, everything at A goes away. So we've got 60 kilonewtons. Okay, remembering that this is positive. So 50 kilonewtons is a negative. Okay, times two meters. Okay, minus 50 kilonewtons times four meters. Okay, and then there's BY, which is going to be positive BY. And the total length of that thing is five meters it equals zero. Okay, so we solve that for BY. Let's see here on here. Let's see here. So we've got, well, you know, do we even need a calculator for this? Let's see here. Uh, negative 200, negative 120. So it's negative 320 divided by five. Well, brought to the other side becomes a positive. We divide by five. It's going to be 64. 64 kilonewtons, which is about what we would expect. Let's see, five times 64 does in fact equal 320. Thank you, calculator. Okay. So then we want AY plus BY equals 110. So if that's the case, then that means AY equals not 110, not 56, but more like 46 kilonewtons. Okay. And this should make some sense to you. Um, because now why you might ask. Well, the reason it should make, make some sense to you is because the weighting is primarily to the right. So because the weighting is primarily to the right, we would expect BY be larger than AY. Okay. Um, if, the, if, the weighting were, if the weighting were all to the right, 100%, like right on top of BY, then BY would be 110 and AY would be zero. Okay, that's just how it goes. Okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my original diagram over here. I'm gonna erase this little doohickey here. I just want forces. I don't, want to, I don't want anything that's gonna create a problem thinking about this. So AY is 46 kilonewtons. Did I, did I remember everything? I did remember everything. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, and then BY is going, I'm gonna erase that bit as well. Get out of here, punk. You're gone. Okay, and now BY, it's gonna go like this. Okay, and that's gonna be 64 kilonewtons. So make sure to give your, you know, your best, uh, you know, sound effects when drawing these things. It always helps. Okay, so um, yeah, so I think we're well. We're not really ready to go because what they want us to do is they want us to draw the, the free body diagrams for this uh, this here frame. Um, and so we'll go ahead and do that. So let's see here. This is A. We're going to need some points on here. C. This is C. This is D. And that's B. Now, I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but such is life. Okay, so I'm going to erase all this work over here on the left, on the right. So I really want to save this space on the left. You know, guys, you're not even showing up. And here I am starving to death, working math problems like a math monkey. But even monkeys get to eat bananas. And I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, so uh, we got our reactions, so we don't need all this nonsense anymore. What we need is a bigger eraser. Um, probably have been quicker to just redraw the whole diagram. And the... Anyway. <laughs> all right, so it wants free body diagrams, and it wants you to do free body diagrams. It wants you to do a few of them. Um, so they say, do it for each section of the beam. So they go from zero is less than X is less than two, and they want you to do uh, two is less than X is less than three. 
and they want you to do it for three is less than X is less than five. Okay. Um, and basically you're, you wanted for this, they, um, yeah, where you're drawing the free body diagram from zero to X. Okay, so all of these are starting at, this is like, um, where's X? So I'm gonna use my, my fancy schmancy ruler here. I wish I could get gray. So that like this could be clear that this is a, yeah, so here's X is going this way, X. Okay, and then, um, let me go ahead and draw these things because these spots are really, really, really important. So these are where the transitions happen. You think I didn't have a ruler about how sloppy these lines are coming out? There you go, you just dot them. Okay, perfect. All right, so anyway, those transitions are gonna be important in a second. Um, and um, so when doing the shear moment diagrams, it's important to line these things up or else it doesn't really make I don't know, it's impossible to understand what's going on. A lot of you are gonna to try to do this in some other way on a final, and that's gonna be a mistake. All right, so from zero to two, basically we're just gonna, we're gonna cut this thing. I'm gonna draw a little thing. We're gonna cut it like right here. It's just somewhere in there. And so what we'll do is we're gonna draw, it's gonna look like this. Here's my frame. I've got this 46 uh, kilonewtons coming up. Okay. And then I'm going to draw this little, this is the end of the frame right here. Okay, and now I need to think about, okay, um, well, do I have a shear? Yeah, I probably do. Okay, um, I like to keep things positive. Um, I forget the sign convention on, on how to define. Okay, so that's going to be B, let me just call it B, I guess. Okay, do I have a, a force, an axial force? I don't, but um, I'm gonna draw it just for completeness. In this case, I know I don't because of the sum of the forces in the X, but I like to kind of you know draw it in there for completeness. Let's see here. Here's my V, come on, man. Here's my V. Okay, we know that there's not gonna be a force here. Okay, but I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it anyway, because uh, you just never know. And, but, but what it means is like, if there were, you know, if in the entire rest of the, this, um, the rest of this beam that I didn't draw, if, if there were an axial force push it, then it would push on, on the, this section. So, yeah. And then the same thing with a moment, right? So if I were to somehow pat, I could pass a moment from the rest of it to this one. Okay. So I like to draw those positive and I just call that a moment. I like to call it a moment of location, but this location doesn't have a name. Um, maybe we call it, uh, let's call it E. Okay, so this is gonna be VE, this is gonna be ME, and this will be FE. Ultimately, we know FE is gonna be zero, okay? So then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing for two to three. Okay, so we're gonna go from, we're gonna have 46 kilonewtons, okay, acting on this beam. And then we're gonna have 60 kilonewtons. Come on, you can do it. 60 kilonewtons acting on the beam. And then let's see, so we're getting out there. And so now we're gonna cut it like right here. Okay, so uh, this is fine. We're gonna keep going. And then somewhere out there, we're just gonna cut it. Okay, um, okay, we're gonna call this point E. We'll call this point F. Okay, now again, I usually like to draw my shears positive. I think in this case, it looks like the shear is probably gonna be negative, right? If I'm doing the, if I'm doing the, like if I'm just looking at the sum of forces in the vertical, we're gonna have, it's gonna be negative, but I'm just gonna draw it positive because that way when I solve for it, I'll get a negative number, okay? There is a force right here, an axial force, okay? Which I'm just gonna draw in the positive direction. Because I mean, there isn't one. There won't be one. But whatever. I like to. I like to just draw it for completeness. And then there's a moment here, and I know there's a moment because this is not a pin connection. So, so this is M F. Okay. Um, great. Okay. And then we'll go down and we'll do three to five. Okay. So basically, I'm going to cut this. 
uh, somewhere in here, anywhere. And we're going to call this point, what's the next one letter? G? <laughs> EFG. Me engineer, me don't know alphabet. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to go uh, this way. Okay, so now I've got 46 kilonewtons here. I've got 60 kilonewtons here. Okay, and then all of a sudden somewhere out there, there's this little, you know, force that's going to begin. All right, and we're going to cut it off. Oh, hello, my Rocky dog. Are you feeling like uh, no one loves you? Well, that's true. Oh, I didn't mean that, my boy. Um, you all know that Rocky is the best dog. I mean, I know some of you have dogs, but you're wrong. My, my dog is the best. Okay, so, <laughs> so, um, so for three to five, um, I've got a, I'm gonna, so what is this, you know, um, so this is gonna be VG. VG, when I used to collect coins, that was the uh, term for very good, it was a very good connect, collection, connection, uh, condition coin. Okay, Rocky is climbing in my lap right now. So since there's nobody here anyway, we're just gonna enjoy how awesome Rocky is for a moment or two. Hello, my pup. Can I get a smooch? Oh, oh, that is not what I wanted. Can I get a smooch? Yeah. Can I get a smooch? Can I get a kiss? You are good for nothing, pup. No one's even here. They don't even care what the answer is. You know why? Because they made the problem up. Some company made the, this isn't even a real beam. It's not even a real beam. Oh, you say the answer is not important. It's only important that they learn what they need. Well, you may be right, my boy. You may be right. You are a very smart pup. Why don't you go eat your food? I put it out there this morning. You're being really finicky. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go get Rocky some food. You're not even here. You're not even here. <laughs> no one's even here, my pup. I'm just talking to myself. I know. You're you are the best of the pups. Let's get you some. Let's make sure you know where you're Come on. Hunger strike. You got a hunger strike. Dang, nuts. All right. Rocky Pup is on a hunger strike. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's. Um, I don't know, are you guys still there? Or are you, st are you guys still not there? Are you still not? Oh, Hannah, you're here. How long have you been here? I've been here for a while. I've been talking to myself. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you realized I was back or not. I did not realize you were back. What happened? You had some technical issues? Yeah, the Wi-Fi went out and then so I just logged on to my phone. Oh, okay. Well, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear my did you hear my brilliant joke? Yeah. Oh, see, so okay. Well, I didn't know you were here. Well, all right. <laughs> well, I hope it wasn't offensive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So is everything making sense then? Uh, I think so. Uh, okay. Just, <laughs> well, interrupt me if it doesn't. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. So I'll continue this. I, you know, I was just talking to Rocky Dog. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so we've got a force here. Okay, so this is F sub G. And then we've got a moment here, which is M sub G. Okay, now the hard thing with this one, of course, is the forces become hard because you need to know exactly what this X value is to figure out how large this one is right here. Okay, um, let me see what they wanted. All right, so we are going to go and we are going to do the shear moment diagrams. So, um, Hannah, have you watched the videos on shear moment diagram yet? Uh, I tried to watch the first one, but I didn't really understand it. Ah, okay. Well, let's um, let's see what we can do here. All right. So you're okay with everything we've done so far? Yeah. 
Okay, now is where we're gonna do the shear and the moment. So what we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna draw two horizontal lines. Um, this is shear. This is moment. Now um, shear and moment. And in a large sense, what we're doing is we're integrating, uh, but um, we're doing it kind of like visually, okay? So uh, this is gonna be weird. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at what's going on up here to tell me what I'm drawing right here, down here. All right, so what's the first force I come to? If I'm starting at the left point and I'm going to the right? Uh, the 46 kilonewtons. Yeah, which way does it go? Up. Perfect. Okay. Now, as I go to the right, do I see any more forces? 60. Okay, but between the here and 60, do I see any forces? Um, I don't think so. Right, and we only really care about vertical forces here because we're looking at shear. And so what we're gonna do is there's not gonna be any change. Okay, because I haven't added or subtracted anything. What do you think I'm gonna do when I get to that 60? It's gonna go down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go down to what value? Uh, I don't know. Well, I was at 46. How much do you think I'm gonna go down? 60. Yep. Yeah. So where do you think I'm gonna end up? Below the line. Yeah, how much below the line? I guess right there. <laughs> okay, 14 kilonewtons. All right, now what do you think is gonna oh, happen? Oh, you meant by subtracting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, yeah, yeah. So what do you think is gonna happen now? What do you think I should do? Um, then you'll go straight again. Mm hmm because there's no other forces. But do you see why I drew the guidelines now? Yeah. Okay, all right, now what? And then it'll go down again. How much? 25. Okay, do you know, do you recognize what's special about this force? No. You see this? Yeah. Units on that. Oh. How much do you think I go down? Fifty. Yeah, so I go down 50 over the whole length, right? But it doesn't all happen at once. So how much do you think I go down per meter that I move to the right? I don't know. Okay, so you see right here, it says 25 kilonewtons per meter. Yeah. Means I'm gonna go down 25 kilonewtons for every meter I move to the right. Okay, so as you just said, I'm gonna go down 50 because the total of all of this is 50 because I got 25 kilonewtons per meter, it acts over two meters. So that's 50 kilonewtons total. So I'm gonna end up, so I'm at 14, I'm gonna end up over here at like 64, right? But what's gonna happen is it's not all being applied at once, it's being applied little by little, like that. Mm. Okay, and the slope of that line is 25 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, for every meter I go to the right, I add another kilonewton. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so like right here, I was at 14, but if I go one, kilo, one meter newton over, or excuse me, one meter over right there, I've added another 25 kilonewtons. So right here, I'm at 39 kilonewtons. And then if I add another 25 to get right here, I'll be at 64 kilometers. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now what happens when we get to the end there? You go up 64. Uh-huh. Now, do you think that it's, it might be logical that we are gonna end up at zero on the end? And yes. Okay, so we should always end up at zero. 
not balanced on the ends, then we're not balanced. Okay, because the inter the internals of the beam can can hold a certain amount of uh, you know stresses and things like that. But right on the ends, if it's not balanced, then there's there's no uh, there's no structure to do that. What is it, my pup? What is it, my sweet baby boy? Uh, you know, Rocky does not like office, any kind of office, anything. He's opposed. All right, so so you see that that's the shear. So what's cool about this, and this di these diagrams are really awesome. Okay, so what's cool about it is you can look at it. What's the maximum shear that th this beam has to hold? 46. Well, that's the maximum positive shear, but what's the maximum absolute value of a shear that it has to, it has to handle? 64. Right, so if you're designing a beam and you know you haven't taken any materials classes, but you will, and you'll know like, oh, how do we get a beam that can hold 64 kilonewtons? Like you'll, you, you'll like, you'll have this because you're designing the building or whatever, or the, whatever. And you'd be like, oh, it's got to hold, you know, 64 kilonewtons in shear. So, you know, that's pretty cool, right? And now we need to figure out what moments it needs. Now, moment is a little bit more difficult, all right? So I want you to think in terms of those little rectangles from calculus. All right, you ready? Okay. All right, so first of all, do you see any external applied moments? So you saw how we, we started. So with the shears, we just did all these um, external, these, all these shears and we just kept track of them. We have to keep track of external applied moments too. Um, do you see any external moments on that um, frame? Is it the, the 46, 60, and 64? Those moments? The, mm -hmm. For the forces? Those are forces, but they're not moments. So, we're, so the forces are gonna, are gonna deliver moments, but it's gonna have a different effect at different locations. Cause like if I pick a location right here, the 46 has a different, uh, effect than it than it does right here because it has a different moment arm, right? So so we need to we need to handle that. So what I'm going to do here is the moment at the end of this thing is zero. So we're going to start right here at zero. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the area of let's say 46 kilonewtons. So I'm going to add the area of this rectangle right here. Okay, and that's, so is that area positive or negative? Positive. So I'm gonna go up. All right, you ready? Okay. okay. And then I'm gonna add this area. Is the first area, is the second area bigger or smaller than the first area? No. It's the same, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go up that same amount. What about this area? Same. Okay. What about this area? Same. Okay, so what do you think the slope of this line is gonna do? It's gonna constantly go up. Constantly go up, brilliant. Okay, so let me erase this. Okay, and it's gonna go up at a constant rate. Oh, come on. Like that. Okay, now we have to think about this. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Maybe it's not that complicated. So how much did it go up? Well, it went up whatever this total area is. So what is the total area of this rectangle? Um, 46 times 14. Nope. 46 is the height. What's the width? Oh, oh uh, the two meters. Mm -hmm. So what's 46 times two? Um, 92. Yeah, so we've got 92. What are the units on that? Uh, kilonewton meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this is a um, this is a moment diagram, right? So it's going to have to be like that. All right, so now let's look at this little bit right here. Okay, positive area or negative area? Negative. Negative area. Okay, what's the um, what's the area of that negative area? The, the area of it? Yeah. Uh, 14. 14 units, kilonewtons times meters, right? Yeah. That's one. So then how do we, um, so then what do you think we're gonna do? 
It'll go down 14. Yep. So we're going to go from 92 down to 78. So we're going to go, and what do you think, what kind of shape do you think this line is going to have? Uh, it'll be a constant. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll make it like, I mean, obviously I'm just guesstimating here and make it like that. Okay. And the reason for that is because each of these little boxes is the same as the one before it. Okay. So you can see how this is going to get a little bit harder in a second. So this is going to be 78 kilonewtons times meters. Okay. Now, um, I should give myself a little bit more space. Hold on, let me give myself a little bit more space. Rocky dog, I know you love statics. This is not the time for you. Okay, you go sit down. You go lay down. Go to your bed. But that's beside the point. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here. I'm going to move this line down. This is just this is just artistic license. I'm not actually changing anything. But I'm going to move moment down because I like to have a little space for these things. Okay. You'll be thinking about what this is going to do. All right. What do you think the shape of this one's going to be? Um, it'll go down. Mm hmm. Is it going to have a constant slope or a changing slope? It'll change. Okay. And what's it going to, how's it going to change? Um, concave up or concave down? Down. Why do you say that? Because it's going further negative. Right. We're getting this each little, this is a more negative than that one. Right. So yeah. Progressive square or uh, box, we're getting more negative. Okay. What do you, if you had a guess, what do you think the area of this, uh, of this thing is going to be? Um, if we've done everything right. Would it be 39 times two? It would be, it is, it is going to be 39 times two, but without even doing it, without, e I mean, that's perfect. Absolutely right. Okay. The, the average value times the, the width is absolutely correct, but you could also could have said, well, if you've done everything right, it should be this number because we have to go back to zero. Oh, right. But I mean, it's better to do it the way you did it and then just make sure that it ends up being correct. Okay, so what we end up with is we end up with like, this is gonna curve downwards. Okay, to the extent that I can draw a curve, which is not very good. You can see why I gave myself some room, but um, let's see if I can, um, come on, we can do, oh no. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do here. Get this ruler back out. Okay, so it's gonna go to 78, about right there, and then, Okay, so if, you, if, if that's a curve, I mean, it's not a perfect curve, but you know. Um, all right, so now we can look at this. That's the shear moment diagram, okay? And that's what it is that you're gonna be doing. Okay, now um, let's see here, okay? And so we can see everywhere in this thing, everywhere, we've got a positive moment. And a positive moment in this case, what do you think it means? Do you think this means that this beam is smiling everywhere or frowning everywhere? Wait, what? Is this, is this beam smiling everywhere or frowning everywhere? So look at this original drawing right here. Does it look like it's going to bend in such a way that it is smiling everywhere or frowning everywhere? Um, frowning. Why do you say frowning? Because of the the way the moment diagram is shaped. Okay, ignore the moment diagram. Look up. Okay. Here. Look up here. Okay. Does it look like the beam is going to bend in such a way that it's smiling or frowning? Smiling. Okay. Why? 
Because there are more forces going down. Well, there's just as much force going down as there's going up, right? That's the nature of statics. Where are the forces going down? Uh, the 25 and the 60. Right, where are they going down in the B? Where are the forces going up? 46 and 64. No, where, where? I know what the numbers are. Where? Like on the ends. Uh-huh, and where are they going down? In the middle. Right, so that's why it's gonna smile. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so this is a smile. So when you see positive, when you see positive moments, that means that area is going to smile. It's gonna bend like this. When you see negative moments, which we don't have in this thing, it's going to frown, okay? Okay. All right. So you can sometimes have these diagrams that, I mean, a lot, you'll have diagrams that do all kinds of crazy things, you know? And in this case, this portion would smile and this portion would frown if we had something that looked like that. Okay. Right. Okay. You ready for another one? Sure. Okay. We don't have a lot of time, so we're just going to do the shear moment diagram. We won't do the rest of all the free bodies and stuff. Um, next time, we'll actually we'll, we'll calculate some of this. We'll do this mathematically. Um, let's see. Um, let's get one that's got a moment. Not that one. Not that one. None of these have moments. All right, let's not do one that has a moment. <laughs> uh, I found one for your homework that had a moment on it. Okay, here we go. All right, let's, um, let's clear all. Clear all drawings. So, I mean, really the best way to do these is to do them graphically. Um, so this one looks like this. It's, uh, ooh, it's, it's a little nasty. Um, <laughs> So it's A, and then over here to C. C is a roller. A. So this is number 11. We don't really have a lot of time. So this is going to be C. And then for some reason, they decided to draw it this way. So here's B on the end. OK, and at the end, they've got a force going downwards, which they call P, which is 11 kilonewtons. OK, and we've got 2 kilonewtons per meter going down this whole thing. Two kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so we've got we're gonna go here to here is 0 0.4 meters. From here to here is 0 0.8 meters. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna quickly solve for the reactions because we need those. Um, I'm assuming you know how to do that. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that relatively quickly. <laughs> so we've got um, so in the y direction, we've got two kilonewtons per meter times 1.8 meters. So let's do the sum of the forces in the y equals zero. Okay, in the x, we know ax is zero. Um, in the y direction, we've got two kilonewtons per meter. Okay, spread out over the whole thing. So that's 1.2 meters. That's negative. We've got an 11 kilonewtons. And then we're gonna add a, y, and c. Okay, we can't solve that one yet. So let's do the sum of the moments in the z direction. We'll do them around point A equals zero. So I've got C times 0 0.4. Let's see, this is positive meters. Okay, and let's see, that one's gonna be positive. Okay, and then we're going to um, subtract whatever this number is right here. So two kilonewtons per meter times 1.2 meters. And then where is that thing acting? Well, it's acting halfway out. So the whole thing is 1.2 meters out. So we're gonna go 0 0.6 meters out. And then we've got that 11 kilonewtons. Okay, and that's gonna be minus 11 kilonewtons times its moment arm, which is 1.2 meters. Okay, holler if, if you have any questions about any of this. Okay, because I'm gonna be, plugging numbers into my calculator. Ooh, 
See, you got a little, see, you got a little big there. C got to be 36.6, 36.6 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, so we're gonna plug that back in up here and we get AY equals 36.6 minus 11 minus 2.4. 23.2, 23.2 kilonewtons. Uh, that's negative. Okay, we're assuming that I've done that correctly. I guess there's uh, <laughs> I guess there's no there's no guarantee. Um, let's see, two times. Where did how did this number get to be so big? Well, it's because C isn't that far out, right? Okay, fair enough. All right, so we've got these external forces. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over here. Okay, here's C, which is 36.6. Right here, 36.6. Uh, let's make that a little bigger. Um, 36.6, and then A. Go down like this. Oh, come on. Okay, so it's going down right here, and that's 23.2. 23.2. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a little fancy schmancy drama guidelines. Okay, ideally, we'll do this on graph paper so that everything is parallel. Okay. Um, I know you like to use the, um, what do you call it? So, um, you know, like, uh, the, what's the program you use? Oh, really uh, OneNote? Yeah, it, it creates really nice documents. All right, so here we go. So here's shear. So tell me what to do. Um, so it goes down 23.2. Mm -hmm. Now what? Um, does it also go down more with the two kilonewton per meter? Mm -hmm. How much is it going to go down total between there and the 36.6? Uh, two times 0 0.4. Right. So that's 0 0.8. So not very much, really. So it's going to go down to 24. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not very much to go from 23 to, okay. And notice it's, it's kind of got that slopey line, right? So that's, uh, so this is now, we're now at 24 because we were at 23.2 and we're gonna add that extra 0.8. Okay, now what? Uh, it'll go up 36.6. Okay, good. And so we're gonna end up positive. What's our new value? Um. It'll be, wait, it'll be 24 plus 36.6, right? Or minus, yeah, 36.6 minus 24, because the 24 is technically negative. So it'll be like 12.6? Um, yep, 12.6 kilonewtons. Okay, cool. And now what? Um, and then it'll go down the two times 0 0.8. Right, so that's 1.6. So that's going to get us to like 11. And notice it's going to have that like very shallow slope. Like that. So we're going to go down that 1.6. And that's going to get us to 11 right here. And now what? And then it'll go down 11. Right, so we feel pretty good about our equation when it works out like that, right? Because we end up back where we, um, you know, back to zero, right? And so that's always a good sign, okay? So that makes sense? Yeah. Okay, another thing, I'm looking at the at the key for this right now, and uh, they like to do this and just put the kilonewtons out there, which I think is probably a good idea. So then we just write 11, 12.6 and 24, and right? So then we don't have all this mess, um, with the units all over the place. Um, 12.6 and 11. Okay, so let's do the moment.
I'm gonna erase this line, give myself a little bit more room, but let's, let's do the moment. By the way, I, I love these. This was easily my favorite part of this. Well, you know what? I, there's a lot of part of statics. That was, that was <laughs> my favorite part. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, so it'll go down 23.2. No, no, no. Remember, we're starting at zero because there's no applied moment. So the only time we're going to start anywhere other than zero is let's suppose we had an applied moment right here like at, at the, that point A, then what would happen is we would, um, then we'd be like, okay, well, let's start, um, we're gonna start with, let's suppose this is 100 kilonewtons times meters. If we had that, that is a negative. So we would start down here at 100 kilonewtons per meter, or kilonewtons times meters, and then we would you know, go from there, wherever, wherever the diagram took us. But um, that's not the case here. We don't have that. So, so what did we do last time? Do you remember? We're going to start at zero, and then we want to think about the boxes. Oh. Come on! Unbelievable how many times I got to tell it that I want to draw. <laughs> okay, so we want to think about the boxes. Okay. So is this a positive box or a negative box? Negative. Negative. Okay. And so that means we're going negative. Okay. What about the next box? Larger or smaller? Uh, the same. No. Larger. Right. A little bit larger, right? And then this one and then this one. They're all progressively a little bit larger. So what is my, what is, what is the shape of this line going to be? It'll concave. Up. Concave up. So it's going to look like this. No, concave down. Right. And why? Because it's going further negative. Right. Okay. So this is going to be like that. Now I'm exaggerating here because probably it's not going that much more negative. Okay, so um, so how, what is my value right here? Um, it is, wait, it is um, the, I forgot, it wasn't the 23.2 times negative 24, was it? 20, 22.4, what? It wasn't the, I think last time I thought it was the whatever the height the height times the the base right right so this is a yeah so it's the area of the shape right is that's what you're getting at yeah yeah and so the area of a, a you know of a I don't know what they call this a trapezoid or whatever this thing is what you want to do is you want to find the middle value here which is what you did last time and then you want to multiply it by this width right here so basically what you're kind of doing is you're kind of saying like, okay, let's, let's take this triangle right here and let's put it right here. And now I've got a rectangle, right? But what we need to do is we just need to find out what that middle value is. So to find that middle value, you take the average of this value and this value. So what's the average of 24? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what's the average of 24 and 23.2? Um, it is 47.2 divided by two. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. What's that? I said, I don't know what that is. Oh, you don't have a calculator. Okay, sorry. 47.2 divided by two is 23.6. So that's the middle value. And then I want to multiply that by the width. Um, times 0.4 meters. Times 0.4 meters. Okay, so we'll get 9.44. So this is 9.44. It's negative. Let's go ahead and put my negative signs in there. Come on, negative, negative, negative. Okay, so now what do we do? Um, then we do the next box or whatever it is. Sure. And what do you see? 
Um, so it's, I mean, it's higher up, but then it goes down. Okay, so what's the shape? Um, well, first of all, are we going up or are we going down? Are we going up? Yep, because this is a positive area. Okay, now is it concave up or concave down? So basically it could be shaped like uh, either this or it could be shaped like this. Concave down. So number one. Yeah. Correct, why? Because it's going further down to the negative. Yeah, so this is our biggest slope right here. Okay, because the area in this little box is the biggest. And this is our smallest slope because the area in that box is the smallest. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way to there. Okay, and this of course is the big test to see if we got it right. We know that that should go into zero because there's no moment at the end. Ah, come on, man, you can do it. Okay, now the question is, what is, we need to figure out the area of this. Now, what do we expect it to be? 9.44. That's what we expect it to be. So what do you want me to punch in the calculator to test that? So it would be 22.6 divided by two. Wait, what is 20, where's 22.6? Isn't it the 12.6 plus 11? Oh, plus 11, so oh, yes, yeah, 23.6, right? Oh, yeah. 23.6 <laughs> divided by two, and then what? Times 0.8 times 0.8 and we get 9.44, perfect. So we go right back to zero, okay? So is this particular thing based on the moment diagram, smiling or frowning? Based off of the moment diagram? Yeah, based on right here, smiling or frowning. Smiling? Now remember, if you have a, if you have a positive moment, you're smiling. If you have a negative moment, you're frowning. Okay, so if we're down here, this is the frown side. Yeah. This side. Okay. Now look okay. at this diagram. Let me let me read. I don't know. You, let me redraw the original and see if that makes sense to you. Okay. So the original looked like this. Um, let's see. So we had um, we had something. Come on, man. It's like determined to erase. Okay. So we had something here. And we had something here. Okay. And we had like this. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm leading the answer here, right? <laughs> uh, <gasps> okay, so I've got a force right here, a big force right here, 11 kilonewtons. And then I've got like, okay, does it look to you like this would frown as in would it bend downwards? Yes. Yeah, it looks like a diving board, doesn't it? You know, and so yeah, this would be a frowny face. So we can feel pretty good about that. Now, what's the max? What's the max uh, moment that it would have to deal with? Nine point four four. Yep, kilonewtons times meters. What's the max shear that it would have to deal with? Um, the twenty-four. Right, and so if you were to ask me, like, where is this thing gonna gonna fail in shear? Well, clearly it's gonna be like right here, barely on this side of this line. So basically this diving board could shear right here, right? So that's basically where um, what's happening is on the right-hand side of this, the forces are predominantly upwards and on the left-hand side, they're downwards. So this thing could shear right there. It would just like, it would just slide apart right there. You know, now maybe the diving boards are really strong in shear. So, you know, that's no problem. Now, if we were asked like, where would it fail due to um, like, the bending, well, it would bend, it would just bend right in here, okay? Because oh, that's where the peak is right there. Those peaks are not always in the same place. In fact, I don't know that they're even usually in the same place, but um, in this case, they are. Okay, so make sense? Yeah. Okay, and next time we'll, uh, we'll solve for the equations of some of these lines, um, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense, or hopefully that part of it will make more sense. So on Thursday, we'll, we'll do the equations. And then um, after that, for the remainder of the semester, we'll just do whatever it is you guys want to do. So. Okay.
I'm a little bit over. So uh, yeah, have a good day. And uh, thank you for listening to my corny jokes. <laughs> you too. All right. Have a good one. All right. Oh, do you have any questions? Sorry. Uh, you don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I'll see you later. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Let's see here. And the recording.